Um, on the forum, some folks raised the question about the uh, resistance of the field coil. Uh, the original, the circuit diagram says 3000 ohms. The one I got on eBay is only 450. Um, and so I thought, just to be sure that there isn't a mistake in the circuit diagram, um, I'll measure the field coil in the original one here, my reference set. And I think you can see there it's 2.946K. So, yep, this definitely has a very high resistance in the field coil. And so, uh, I gotta replicate that in mine. And you know, now that I look at this one that I uh, did quite a while ago, which was belonged to my uh, neighbor's uh, grandparents, um, it isn't really restored, is it? It's repaired. <laughs> so it's been recapped and various bits and pieces done to it, so it works. And the case is all cleaned up, but you could not, by any stretch of the imagination, call the chassis restored. Um, so if I can get the other one going, I may come back and give this to once over again and uh, clean it all up and do it properly. And one of the things I was doing um, just in preparation for the other one I wanted to check that this set still worked okay um, since I've been messing around with it. The other thing is when it's in its case right over here over the audio output tube is really really hot and in fact as I hold it in my hand over here right now I can really feel the heat coming up. Um, and so since I have these dropper resistors in the um, dial bulb circuit, I didn't know if the heat was being generated by those resistors or the audio output tube. Uh, now I know it's the audio output. Because uh, I did some quick uh, temperature checks. Uh, and the, the rectifier valve and the audio output valve run really hot they're like about 90 something degrees centigrade the other ones are about like between 30 and 40. Um, so at least I know where the heat's coming from and I did read somewhere that metal uh, valves generally run at much higher temperatures than glass. I don't know if that's true or not I read that somewhere. Um, okay guys well we're getting close here um, uh, I've just tacked in the um, field coil for the speaker and all I've really done is it went between the neutral and the B plus in, in the circuit diagram and I've just stuck a 2.2k resistor in series with it um, since there's already some fairly chunky electrolytics uh, to smooth the power supply so I'm hoping uh, that that's the how can I put it? The minimum disruption. Um, there were lots of suggestions on the Goldborn form about other possibilities to try out. And so uh, I think I'll give them all a go at some point if this thing ever shows signs of life. Um, so we're a long way from that yet. Um, I have put all the valves in and I've checked. We have filament continuity, which is kind of nice. Um, so that's a, a first. Um, I found a solution for the grid cap. Um, let me see if I can show you. I had some of these two part fasteners, um, which, uh, and one half of the fastener. I will try to zoom in on. So you can probably see here that uh, one part of the fastener has all these teeth on it and as it turns out these teeth are exactly the right size to grab the top of the, uh, the grid cap on, on the valve. And so all I've done is I've soldered uh, the wire onto one of these and it hangs on there nice and tight uh, with lots of good connectivity. So that's the solution, uh, at least for the moment anyway, for my uh, grid connector. Um, we may do something a little more elegant further down the line. So uh, since, it's all val uh, since it's all metal valves, um, 
there won't be anything to see if things are lighting up so my only indicator is going to be the bulbs I think we're getting to the point where this thing is going to need some electricity who would have thought it alright guys I guess there's no escaping um, it's crunch time um, so we're gonna give it some give it some power so the variac is turned down to zero you power it on give it about 50 volts here and I see the uh, the dial bulbs have started to fire up current seems to be there's no excessive current draw um, you go to 100 volts Okay, volts are cranking up. Turn up the volume here. Whoops, I hear something. Okay, I got a B plus of 97. Oh, now I have a high frequency. Very, I don't know if the camera picks that up. There's a very high frequency. It's independent of volume. If anything, it gets a little bit less when you get the volume full on. Touching the antenna gets, makes it louder. Okay, we have uh, instability here, that's for sure. I'm just going to quickly go all the way to 120, which is its rated power. Okay, so my B plus is at 115 now, which is too high, so we're going to take that back down. It's at 110 volts. I have the right, but I have this high frequency. Okay. I think uh, we definitely have a sorry about that noise. <laughs> so I think, um the most likely suspect, obviously, is the coils that I've made. Um, and since... Uh, I turn this off. And since it's uh, providing negative feedback, which they're taking off the secondary of the output transformer, it's possible I've got the, um, the phasing wrong. Um, so I'll have to see about how I might change that. Probably the easiest thing to do is to just change the wiring of the uh, output of the uh, secondary on the audio output transformer. But hey, I think we have a major step forward here. Um, so it powers up. Nothing goes bang. Nothing catches fire. <laughs> we have some audio through the speaker, a bit of a hum. And it varies when I touch the antenna, which would suggest that there is at least some degree of continuity running through. Um, and, uh, yes. Okay, I think I'll break there, um, do a bit of reading up and a bit more research, and um, see what else we can do as next steps. More to come.